Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the valuations and taking the estimate from the Thomson Reuters icon. For example, um, if you type in any company names in Thomson Reuters, um, you were able to select a company. And from the company main page, you can see lots of information. For example, um, Apple now is straight in 448. Um, because I already selected the estimate, so this will be the page. If you actually land on the overview page here, um, it will show you the news, the trend, etc. And to get the analyst forecast, it is the estimate. You need to click on it. And you have a bunch of historical data together with the forecast data and it got all the key elements we need like earning per share, dividends um, and uh, book value, return on equity etc. So we can just use this set of information to do our forecast. Um, to, to use them we, we by collect the, this information to Excel by clicking the Excel export and uh, it will just open it, save it, do whatever you like. Um, it will come up with something similar to what we have here. For example, it will come up with something similar to this. This is the Dell application. Actually, this is, will be the Apple estimate. So we, last time I downloaded it. So once you get all this information, of course, then you just you need to build your own valuation model. For example, we use residual earnings model. Um, I did both the Apple and Dell. I can show you the Dell version of this. Before I show my analysis, I'm going to show you two of the attempts from our, our fellow students. Actually, they're both very interesting application. They did um, some point I want to make. And one version of this, actually, what they did here is rather than taking the analyst forecast, they take it on the estimation from, from the intrinsic value tab, where you will get the information from um, valuations, intrinsic value. Here you can see there is some estimate about growth, I believe. So for example, you actually just get um, information from here saying the growth rate is 4.4, um, 4.2, etc. And then you just fit them in here. Um, I think there's even more detailed information from the, the growth here. You can actually tap into it. Um, In here, the in in the page we have, I think those are the um, in the forecast one, the estimate. It only show you just few years, but then it also have in this tab actually give you more detailed information on actually longer term horizons. But once it, we have some sort of data like this and then we have a starting point of the data, then we can build the forecast using the, just purely based on the rate and then get the forecast of earning, earning per share, etc. And we, we then can estimate the book value, the return on capital employed, and the retained residual earnings with a 9% discount we can then calculate all the residual earnings present values etc and one good thing about this spreadsheet is that actually they put everything or the assumption in one place and if you change a number here everything will fall through so we can see the effect of the change um, the calculation actually is it's done quite nicely. 
um, they make one mistake without adding the book value which we highlighted there um, and also they actually put a scenario analysis on what if we actually assume a different level of growth rate um, for, for the long-term growth what happened to this long-term growth value um, I actually also did one scenario analysis for them to, to look at the correct analysis based on their parameter what if this um, long-term growth rate and the required rate of return change what happened to the firm value so the firm value currently trade at 48 something this is potentially can be the combinations of what people actually thinking uh, Apple is at this stage the required rate of return is about 11% and the long-term growth rate is about 4.7% or maybe there are other combinations somewhere down in this corner higher re required rate of return higher growth rate um, so that's an interesting analysis but it's not what we ask for because what we want is really use all the analyst forecast information to do the job so what one other group of the student actually did um, also did this analysis um, and here is a much a simpler version and you can you can see what they did it is indeed do the same thing like download this forecast information and um, the good thing they did here is of course they use some um, they actually always use reference to get information from up uh, from the spreadsheet there um, not that much to say but one important thing they did here which is not that good is that they use um, when they calculate the value of the residual earnings rather than use per share measurement they use the total net asset which then it's fine when you try to calculate the total firm equity value but this company value need to divide it by number of share to turn into the uh, share value per share uh, yeah um, share price which make it comparable to what's going on in the market so I, I recommend everyone to maybe just use the, the per share measurement then you can come up with the price and that's exactly what I did in one of my calculations here. For example, um, what I did is I lay out a structure and then I, I kind of reference everything as from the left hand side, make sure they are correct, even referencing the name of it. So dividend per share, book value per share, and, uh, and then the ROE. And it, one interesting thing here is the ROE they, they reported is um, in percentage but they didn't put a percentage sign so I need to convert the percent divide them by 100 so that make the calculation correct and uh, we don't need the growth for the time being what I what I did, did to estimate the future long-term growth is actually I average whatever happened in this historical and the forecast periods average growth is, is, min is a minus number and um, then I do the required rate of return uh, sorry the retained earnings calculations those are not really necessary but uh, from 2013 onward it, they, these are the value we're going to use for calculating the future value so that is how we do it times the per share book value per share and um, the discount rate is on R9 this one where's the B13 why you actually see B25 okay um, that actually is wrong um, slightly so that's why I can't recognize this it should be this place Yes. Um, so this is how it should be, and we then need to lock it to just stay in this column, and we can check it over. Yes. So the calculation now should be correct. Yeah. And here, 
this is correct the discount factor should be from the year and so we then discount everything the residual value back to the present value of residual earnings and then we sum them all up and then we're going to calculate this uh, continue value by looking at the final re re residual earning with us growth and this is residual earnings growth we estimated to the next period and then discount it perpetually with a growth rate of that as well so this gives you the value and then we discount it back to the present value and we sum all these three things out the book value which we should actually do it here interestingly um, so you can see actually by checking this I realized there are several mistakes I make during the process of the calculations previously so now actually according to this calculation Dell actually only worth 11 pounds uh, sorry 11 dollar and currently I think they are trading at 12 something so all the conclusion actually is different um, so one thing we want to look at is how actually we can create a scenario analysis so we want to know okay the share price per, per share and then with a different value of for example let's say uh, the growth the future long-term growth um, which will be currently be using this negative number actually it's quite a big number here um, which is let's say minus 0 0.15 and we want to say what if we do this by every 3% so minus 0.12 uh, we don't need that many we just want to see okay negative 15 to positive 15 percent so that will be the long-term growth rate we want to look at and then um, also we want to know the discount rate from maybe so which means is the required rate of return the required rate of return will be start from 0 0.06 to 0 of those um, sorry 0 0.07 and way up to like require returns per team and once we have this information here which we set up the key thing to set up this table is that we need to make sure these two lines join and then sorry um, and the, the objective value should be on this corner yeah and then we do a scenario analysis somewhere if you click on the data what if analysis on the data table so the row input will be this row will be the discount rate so we select the original value which actually will generate that share price and the column so this is the long-term growth so select this value which because it actually was an input to this place and click OK that will do okay, some value you can't calculate because the, if the growth rate and the discount rate is the same then you're going to have a problem and that's why the down this corner those are not very reliable number to look into but we can, we can see these are different valuations so the current valuation possibly if it's trade at about 12 or something it possibly actually in these different regimes of, of trading those are those are the possible assumptions the market using rather than this level of uh, negative growth 
So as long as it is have a zero growth, it's not negative growth. This company is worth more than what it's been trading, unless the required rate of return is higher than twelve. That's what it's saying. So please go ahead and try this process yourself if as much as you can and, and potentially use the, a longer period because I only use three period uh, analysis you can use the longer uh, projection from from the analyst report uh, um, to, to do calculations um, yeah and if you have any question please just let me know so email me